Hi again, welcome back. It's Christmas Eve. That's better than that, isn't it? It's TT Eve. First practice starts tomorrow. So we've been up uh, sorting a few things out today, getting ready for the first session tomorrow. So let's have a little look at them. It's Sunday afternoon and um, first practice starts tomorrow. It's a grey, wet, horrible afternoon here today and it's, it's, it's there's, a, there's, a, there's a feeling around the paddock, everything's a little bit subdued, you know, there's no one queuing up for ice creams, it's all a little bit, mm, and it's just because of the weather and if you are here last year and, and enjoyed that glorious weather, you know what like amazing vibe there is around the whole place just because every day is a great day to be out and about. So yeah, it doesn't feel great up there at the moment, but if the weather becomes good, everyone forgets all about it. Practice week isn't looking great. Um, tomorrow, Monday, actually looks like it's going to be all right. And because it's the bank holiday, we've got a massive window of road closure. It means we'll find time in that day, even if it was a bit unsettled, to get the sessions in. We're not on such a, you know, got, haven't got a small window like we do for the rest of the week to just squeeze them in. So, yeah, the, who knows what race week's going to do. I've heard might be some high pressure moving in. And if race week turns out to be as good as last year's race week, practice week will be forgotten about and uh, it'll still, it'll, everyone will be happy with how the weather's going for the week. So, just been to the grandstand, and as always, best bit, new lid. So, it's going to uh, split opinions again, isn't it? It always does, but I think it looks ace. I really like it. The last few years, the, the helmets have basically been black, red a bit of white and then lastly they put a bit of yellow in and it's like and i've said this before it's like there's only so much you can do with the space you've got on a helmet and they've got to incorporate obviously the three legs man the ct map and, and the rest of it so yeah it's difficult but um yeah i really like that i think it looks really nice and all right boys already got our tear offs on she's all ready to go for tomorrow so like if you if you sign on as a marshal at all you get a marshals pack, and we, we are still signing on as normal marshals. And this year, they've done a really nice, uh, really nice water bottle. So it's a metal one. We got like a plastic one last year. So it stepped up. Course map on the back, and then all the different sectors and all the different uh, marshal locations within them sectors. So it's really cool. I like that. I think that's really nice. So any anyone, any of you guys who want to sign up to marshal over the next two weeks, get yourself signed up. You get a bag. You get your program. You get your water bottle. A few other little bits in there. Definitely worth it. Really nice. Yesterday I, had to, I got a chance to have a good chat with Richard. So our new TM we spoke about this year, Richard Wilson, who's coming in, number eight. Uh, Richard came down to my workshop yesterday because I was just doing the, all the stickers for his bike, the, the yellows on the front and things. We had a good chat for a good hour. So it was, it was really, really good because like I've said in previous videos, last time I spoke to Richard was when he broke down on his note on a ball crane about five years ago. So... It was really good yesterday to have a chat. He asked us some questions, just like, there's a, there's a million things and you can overthink everything because there's so many different things that you might have to do. If you start thinking about all of them, it's so overwhelming. And so it's just, just trying to put him at ease really. And obviously he'll be nervous tonight and tomorrow is a big day for him. And it's like, you can't practice the things you're gonna have to do. You know, you can practice certain procedures, but when you actually get put on the spot and you've got to you, you've got to do your thing, there's no way of practicing for that. It's like footballers practicing penalties, you smash it in the top corner all the time on the training pitch, but when the pressure of the actual the actual events there and it really matters, it's it's a slightly different thing. So yeah, he's definitely got his head screwed on, he's an intelligent lad and he's obviously he's a quick rider and stuff. Sometimes intelligent people they can overthink things, they're trying to make sure everything's perfect all the time. He's just—he knows everything he needs to know. He's going to go into it now and just see how he gets on. So, good luck to Richard. I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I'm pretty confident he's going to be all right. And um, if you've got any questions for any others, obviously you'll come and ask. But yeah, so we're good to see Rich out there. So a couple of bits we had to do just to the bikes is put any of our radio um, communications equipment on. So it's a push to talk button, so it allows us to hit the button on the bike and it connects to our radios with our headset in our helmet, so we can talk while we're riding. And then on the back, changing our plates over. So, we talked about this in previous videos, but anyone who hasn't seen them, we just run our plates on the back, numbers one to eight, and they'll stay on as 
they are road legal for the duration of TT. Um, we get a dispensation for that, and we just use them on when the sessions are on, but also on open roads before. We are, we're allowed to just run around with numbers one to eight on. Um, if you've been down or seen any of the footage from the pre-TT Classic, which has been on the last few days, you'll see that the lads are down there. So we've just run three travel marshals on the uh, Southern 100 course, on the Blown course, just because of its size. We don't need, obviously don't need eight. We use three. We use uh, Tony, Jim, and Darren has now taken over from Paul. So Paul is number three. So you typically see number one, two, and three down there. Um, I'm pretty sure Darren is running his number. We're going to run number three anyway because there's no point in having like number one, two, and six. Um, and if it was other lads, it could be like two, four, and seven or something. It's just because you may as well just have one, two, and three. It's a lot simpler. But yeah, Paul stepped down from doing that now. Darren's taken over. And it is a lot more because they've been down there for three days now, a couple of nights and a couple of days, and it just adds on. And then we're going straight into TT tomorrow, so obviously I'm going into TT tomorrow completely fresh. haven't done anything yet, and uh, those boys have already had three days on the job, so they're, uh, they're taking on a bit more than, than, than the rest of us. But yeah, um, weather's been a bit mixed down there, but they're running all weather down there, um, and people still say, oh, why can't you run in the wet round here? Um... One argument is obviously about like the super bikes and the big bikes that the TT are too have too much power to run in the wet and it's a bit too dangerous. And the flip side to that is I think as well, they run them in the wet at BSB and World Super Bikes and MotoGP, you know, put wet tires on, get out there and put up with it. But it's not that, that isn't the reason. The, the reason is if it's raining on the Isle of Man on the lower part of the course, it's definitely going to be cloudy and misty on the top part. And that means that the helicopter can't land. If the helicopter can't land, you can't go racing. So we've had days, and it does happen here because of, cause it's, cause it's an island and we suffer with sea mist, where you'll just have a massive bank of sea mist coming off the sea. It's a completely dry day, it's nice conditions, but we can't start a race because there's no visibility for the helicopter. And if the helicopter can't fly, you can't go racing. It's as simple as that. It's just a safety measure. And so the, the old lines of, uh, well, they did in the old days, get them out there, put your wets on and put up with it. It's not going to fly. It's not about that. And you can see that because they'll run super bikes at the Southern 100 in the pouring down rain because it's not about the track being wet. It's about the safety of, of the helicopter crew and being able to get a helicopter in at all to get riders out if they need it. So, yeah, that, that should hopefully um, settle that little not argument, but a uh, little bit of misinformation that gets surrounded by why we don't run in the wet at the TT. I haven't really got much else to add to that. Um, again, we've had loads of questions off the last videos, and um, I'm meeting with Jim on Tuesday, so maybe we'll get something together then, and we can uh, go through a few of those. But yeah, I'm not going to make this a long one, it's just a quick one. Obviously, what to show off the lid, because they're just like, I, I know I say all the time, they're our prize possessions for, for the whole of the, the TT and Manx Grand Prix. This, you know, it's, they're just like the best thing in the world, and I can't thank our eye enough. Like, just to keep sending them to us and look at the service as well. They just they'll get cleaned and tear offs every day for us, and just an amazing, amazing, you know, gesture from them to us. And then like can't thank them enough. Brilliant, lads up there, brilliant. But yeah, first practice tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get a nice long session uninterrupted. Boys can get plenty and girls can get plenty of laps in, get themselves up to speed. And then we'll just take each day as it comes after that for the rest of the week because it's looking likely we're going to have a couple of delays or maybe cancellations throughout the week. Uh, but we'll find time to slot things in. And you, you know, you can't do anything about the weather. There's no point getting annoyed about it. There's no point getting upset and angry. You just, it's the same for everyone. There's no way of controlling it. And we're just going to have to uh, take as it comes. It's not going to be as good as last year. It's obvious. But we'll make the best of it. Hopefully, everyone behaves themselves. And uh, we'll get you an update in a few days. Cheers.